Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp and today we're going to be discussing enumerations. Now what if you have a whole bunch of constant data, let's say, not not constants like we've done before, but you have a bunch of different uh, similar pieces of data that you know is not going to change and you'd like to group them in, let's say, their own data type. For an example, let's say we want to create a data type called colors and all the different values, just like integers, you could have a bunch of positive and negative whole numbers. Uh, likewise, the colors, we, red will always be red, right? That's a constant. Orange will be orange. Just like 1 will always be 1 and negative 300 will always be negative 300. It's always the same, right? So how can we go about creating our own enumerated data type? Let's figure that out. So let's go into our show button first. So outside of our show button, at the class level, let's figure out how to create our, uh, or figure out the format to creating our own enumerated data type. So first we use the enum keyword, followed by the name of that data type that we like to call it. In this case we'll use colors. And then some brackets and a semicolon. Then all your different types separated by commas will go in between these curly braces. So let's create ours. So we use the enum followed by colors, because that's what we want to call it. Then our brackets. Then we can put all, all our information in. Now each of the pieces of information that you put in there will be represented by an integer by default. You can actually change the data type that represents these, and I'll show you that in, uh, right after I do this so you know. Uh, but because they're represented by integers, when you put in the names such as red, orange, or maybe you're doing countries like what we did in the last video, or wh whatever you'd like, what else is there? Or just maybe times of the day, morning, noon, night, uh, these will not be strings. These are not strings. They are their own type. So you do not put them in quotation marks. Okay, so I'll just type in red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Quite easy to work with. Now, each of these have their own... You know what? I shouldn't show you the different types yet. Let me just show you how these work as integers. But anyways, they do start out just like indices at zero. So red will be represented as zero, orange is one, yellow is two, and so on, all the way to purple, which is five. So let's figure out how to actually access one of these, or to read one of these. So when we click our show button, uh, let's create our a, a variable using this new data type that we created. So we won't be using int or anything like that. We're going to use this, we're going to use this data type that we just created. So we're going to use colors instead. Oh, first of all I need to spell it right. So colors, and let's call it my color. Then we're going to want to say that equal to. Now, how do we go about doing this? Well, what we're going to have to do is type this in again, our data type, colors, dot, then one of these. So what do we want to do? Let's go with red, since that's index 0. And, well, it's number 0. It's not really, in, these aren't really, con these aren't considered indices, but it's number zero. So how do we actually read this? So now we have my color is equal to colors.red, but we want to actually see the words red pop up. So let's create a message box. Dot show. And my colors. And red should pop up, right? Well, the reason why this is actually underlined is because um, this is not a string. Remember when I said that these aren't, oh, my colors doesn't even exist. My color. There we go. Okay, so the reason why this is coming out as an error is because these aren't strings. They are their own data type, colors. So we're going to have to convert it into a, not, well, not a semicolon, convert it into a string as such. So now if we run this, we should get our red. There we go. And of course, whatever color we put right here is what we'll get in return. So if I did purple, I should still get purple. Now, how do we actually uh, retrieve the actual integers that represent each one of these? Then after that, I'll show you how you can actually change the data type that represents them. So in order to do that, let's uh, put a comment there. And let's see the difference that we do. So since the data type that represents each one of these index numbers is an integer, we have to create an int instead of the actual colors. Then after that, we'll use my color again and set that equal to, then allow me to type this in first. So we did colors.red. 
Now the only difference between this and this is that in parentheses in the front, we'll have to put the data type once again, which is an int. So as you can see, the only difference is the data type colors to whatever data type represents that index number. And the only difference between this and this is you throw this in the front. That's all. So this time, we'll get the index number. So I click show, and we get 0. 0 is red. And purple should be the 5. There we go, and there's our 5. Now, did you know you could actually change what number we, what, uh, number represents each one of these elements? You could. So in front of the orange, you could put equals to 2. So instead of it being so 0, then instead of 1, this will be 2. And let's go yellow equals 7. So let's look at orange here. I click show, and now we get the 2. And... If I throw in yellow, I click save and build, I get the 7. Now, since yellow is 7, what do you think will happen to green? Hmm, let's find out. We get 8. So, what you need to bear in mind is if you put your own values here, the next one will always be one higher, unless, of course, you... Uh, specify yourself. You know what I haven't done? I haven't done uh, if I made one one less. That's really interesting. I wonder what happened now. Still get two. That's really, really interesting. You know what? I've never come across this. This could actually... If you put one that's lower in front of uh, one that's higher, you could probably run into some problems here because both green and orange here is now two. So you could actually come up with some uh, issues here. Okay, so bear that in mind. I never even thought about that. There's a there's a flaw in this system. I th I think if you do this, an error should pop up, in my opinion, because that that could really lead into some trouble. But anyways, bear that in mind. But we're not going to even be doing that anyways. So let's get rid of all of these. So now that you have your two different ways, let me show you how you can change the data type. So what you could do is in front of the name that you gave that da data type, this enumerated data type, put a colon, then whatever data type you like to use, like we could use byte. So now all these represent bytes instead, and we could still use those same numbers, 2, 3, 4, whatever you'd like. Uh, could we put int, even though that's the default? Yep. Yeah. Let's put double. Whoops. Does that work? No, we have an error. Type byte, short byte, short, unsigned short, int, uint, long, or u long expected. So as you can see, these are the only data types that you can use there, so bear that in mind. So we can't use a double, but let's just go back to the int, which is the default, so we don't have to actually put it there. Now let's actually say that we have a list box in which the user doesn't put the items in there, but they're already in there to begin with. So we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And let's say depending on whatever they have highlighted and they click the read button, so it's going to read button, a variable will be equal to that color and it will be printed in a message box. So in order to do that, so how do we do this? These, these aren't variables that exist. These aren't strings that exist. So how do we actually get this information? Uh, we have accessed what element is highlighted by the selected index, but I mean that starts at zero, not the color. Hmm, or could we do that? This, uh, If we looked at this list box, the selected index would actually equal the integers that represent each one of these inside of this enumerated data type. So we could actually use those. So we could make an int, int called selected, I guess we could call it, set that equal to then the selected index. So list colors dot selected index. Just like that. So now this would be equal to the index number of whatever we select in the list box. Then we could make a switch statement, couldn't we? 
and then we could see what they have highlighted. So we could put selected in here as such, and then we could go for some cases. So case zero will be the red because that has the index number of red. So we could create a new variable called int new color, and then we could set that equal to. Oh wait a minute. We don't want to, we don't want to get the integer because we already know the integer. We want to use the color. So new color equals and we could go colors dot whoops dot red. So now this new color will now be equal to the red. Then we can throw in a message box dot show is equal to new color dot to string. Whoops, not a semicolon. Why do I keep doing that? So output. And then we can go message box buttons dot OK. Message box icon dot information. And that could probably go on to the next line. There we go. So now we have case zero. So we could go copy, paste, paste, paste and paste and paste. So now we have a whole bunch here. So we could go, this is case one, this is case index two, three, whoops, four and five. So all six colors will be here. So we could change this to orange. We could change this to yellow. We could change this to green we could change this to blue and at the bottom we can change this to purple there we go and and you know what I should probably declare the colors new color up here so I should probably go colors new color there we go and probably get rid of all this right here just the data type because we can't declare more new colors in the same thing so we'll just throw this out here like that there we go now why is this oh yeah now we need a break so before I actually do the break let me uh, finish this off so all we have here is the name all we're going to have is the name printout so let's have something more advanced come out so you selected and then whatever they selected so a space so let's throw that in there as well so I'll copy this and paste 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 and paste and we should probably have a break as well well, not so much as we should as it's forcing us to. With good reason. Most languages, they don't force you to have a break, but it's very wise to do that. To make sure that... No, it's like if statements. It's like if you put a bunch of if statements instead of a bunch of else ifs. It's much wiser to have else ifs, so uh, multiples don't come out true. And we should probably have a default, shouldn't we? copy paste break and which I throw in here error and right here should be error just in case they didn't highlight one of them okay so this tour is almost over so let me show you this little program that we just made using the select case we can fetch the index number of whatever's highlighted in the list box and then use that to determine what color they selected so I'll press F5 and let's see how this works. So red, you selected red, you selected green, yellow. So that's really, really cool, isn't it? So if we uh, load this and we don't have anything highlighted, we get the error. So that's to make sure it doesn't crash. So that's really, really cool, isn't it? So if you have set data, that's how you could do it. And you don't have to make separate variables for each of these. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. And uh, I'll see you next time.